In this video, I'm going to solve this question. There exists a random variable x with mean mu x and variance sigma square x for which the probability that x lies between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma is equal to 0 0.6. This statement is and these are the four options that we are given. Now let's try to eliminate some of the options first. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at part number C. The part number C is saying that this statement is true only for the normal distribution for appropriate choices of mu and sigma square. Now see, this statement cannot be true. Reason being, if x follows a normal distribution with mu x and sigma square x, then as per the characteristic of a normal distribution, the probability that x lies between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma is equal to 0 0.954. That means if you're working with a normal distribution, then 95.4% of the observations lie between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma. And this statement is true for all the normal distributions irrespective of the value of mu and sigma square. So if x follows a normal distribution, then this statement has to hold. That means part number C cannot be the right answer because part number C is saying that this statement is true only for the normal distribution for appropriate choices of mu and sigma square. Well, for a normal distribution, the choice of mu and sigma square doesn't even matter. If you are working with a normal distribution, then this has to hold irrespective of the value of mu and sigma square. Okay, that means C is definitely not the right answer. This statement will not hold for normal distribution. Now let's take a look at part number A. Part number A is saying that this statement is true for any distribution for appropriate choices of mu and sigma square. Well, we just discussed that this statement is not true for normal distribution. That means this part is also not right because this part is saying that this statement is true for any distribution. If the statement is not true for normal distribution, then we definitely cannot say that it's true for any distribution. So even part number A is not the right answer. Now we are left with part number B and part number D. Part number B is saying that this statement is true only for the uniform distribution defined over an appropriate interval. So if you talk about the part number B, you will have to talk about uniform distribution and then you will have to try thinking about some intervals. And the part number D is saying that this statement is false. So what I'm going to do is that first I'm going to talk about part number D, whether part number D is the right answer or not. If part number D is not the right answer, then we will see how can part number B be the right answer. So let's talk about part number D first. Part number D is saying that this statement is false. So let's check whether the statement is false or not. And to check this, I'm going to work with Chebyshev's inequality. So Chebyshev's inequality, this is what I'm going to use to see whether the statement is true or not. So according to Chebyshev's inequality, if X is a random variable, if X is a random variable with mean mu and variance sigma square, then for any constant k greater than zero, the following statement should hold. So according to Chebyshev inequality, this statement should hold irrespective of the probability distribution. So it doesn't matter which distribution X follows, whether it's normal distribution, uniform distribution, or any other distribution, according to Chebyshev's inequality, this statement should definitely hold. Now let's try to simplify this expression to see what we get from here. So on the left hand side, you have modulus. So I can write this as probability that X minus mu lies between minus k sigma and k sigma is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 divided by k square. I hope you are comfortable with modulus. So this expression was in modulus and I can write it in this manner. Okay. Now let me add mu to all these terms. And for the sake of convenience, I'm not going to write these x again and again. So let me just remove it from here as well. Okay. So if I add mu to all the terms, then I'll get the left hand side will become mu minus k sigma 
less than x less than mu plus k sigma is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 divided by k square. Now look at the statement of inequality. This expression holds for any constant k where k is greater than 0. So let me write this expression for k equal to 2. You will understand in a while that why am I writing it for k equal to 2 and not for any other value. So if I write this expression for k equal to 2, I will get probability mu minus 2 sigma less than x less than mu plus 2 sigma has to be greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 divided by k square. 2 square is 4, so you have 4 over here. And 1 minus 1 divided by 4 is 3 by 4. And 3 by 4 can also be written as 0 0.75. So according to Chebyshev inequality, the probability that x lies between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.75. And note that Chebyshev inequality is not saying anything about the distribution of x. It doesn't matter what distribution x has, the lower bound on this probability is going to be 0 0.75. So that means the Chebyshev inequality is just providing you with a lower bound. For specific distributions, the probability can be equal to 0 0.75 or it can be greater than 0 0.75, but it will never be less than 0 0.75. For example, if x follows normal distribution, then this probability is 0 0.954, which confirms to the Chebyshev inequality because it is greater than 0 0.75. Now, according to Chebyshev inequality, this probability has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.75. And the statement that you have in the question is saying that this probability is 0 0.6. That means this statement given over here is wrong. Okay. That means the right answer is part D. The statement is false. And this is all for this question.